Um, and so, um, so I sent you some questions just because that helped me yeah. think. And you don't, we can talk about whatever you want. Like, um, I have so many personal questions I would want to ask you about how you work and, and your work, but um, just- Sure, no, you can ask, go ahead and just start and ask me questions and I'll answer them. I mean, okay. I looked at your questions and they all make sense. And it's just like, wow, how do I say, you know, where it starts or who, who's the influence? But as we talk, exactly. you know, yeah. things will come out. So you started, um, it, it, I, I looked through your, your history and stuff and you started out with some, um, we, you started as a printmaker, it sounds like, and yes. a graphic, yeah. and a graphic I designer did. too. But the printmaking, because I've done printmaking with Stephen Thomas over up at Oxbow, sometimes he would have these um, adult sessions, which were fantastic. And, um, and so I'm curious what, what the printmaking propelled you to go to book art? Um, well, yeah, I started um, sort of in printmaking because when I went to college, I went to a liberal arts college, Barnard. Uh -huh. And you were allowed to take classes at the School of Fine Arts, but I think they had to be pass fail and you could only take maybe two for credit because uh -huh. everybody knows fine arts isn't real college. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I took, a, I took a class in Japanese woodcutting there. Uh -huh. And then I took another and another because I really liked it a lot. And um, that sort of got me going in that direction, I guess, uh, of printmaking. I mean, I really liked being able to reproduce images. Because if you draw a picture, you only have one picture, but if you make a print, you can have a hundred prints, you know? And I, I was given to giving things away. So if you had lots of prints, you could give lots of prints away and still have one if right. you remember to keep one. <laughs> right. Right. And um, when I got out of college, I, um, I think I did a, a, like an adult, um, education class my I was living at my parents house in between things trying to figure out what I was doing and there was some kind of uh, adult ed class that was sort of like it was like this survey of printmaking but it was all made up versions of it so we didn't do etching we did plexiglass engraving or something we instead of uh, I mean it was all just kind of it was it was the medium of media of printmaking translated into things you could do basically on your kitchen table or something, and I really enjoyed that a lot. And um, then I had this opportunity. My twin sister was at St Martin's School of Art in London, doing a degree in um, illustration, and she told me they had this program that if you had a, a bachelor's, you could apply with a portfolio and be admitted for a postgraduate year in whatever, you know. Um, so I applied in, wow. in, in graphic design because I thought, well, that's, I had decided that graphic design was something I could make a living at. And um, so I applied in graphic design and I was accepted in printmaking because almost everything that I showed in my portfolio was prints or little, you know, paintings and stuff. So, um, so I went there for a year and it was, uh, it was pretty amazing as a year because, you know, they had these wonderful printing studios and each studio had a technician. So you could go in not knowing anything and, you know, they would help you figure it out and do what you wanted to do. So um, I started out in the first, it was, it was, there were three terms to the year and the first term I uh, had no idea you know, I was like, ah, this is so big. How am I going to do this? How can I be, a, you know, everybody else seemed to know what they were doing and I felt very insecure. And so my, my tutor at the time looked at my sketchbook and she said, oh, here, here's these drawings of hands. Start doing hands. It doesn't matter. Go into every studio, do prints of hands. So I spent a term doing all these weird prints of hands, just, you know, etching, silkscreen, litho, everything. And when I was done with that, I then knew how to do some of, you know, the techniques of all these media. And she said, okay, what do you want to do now? And what I really liked about the British system is you come up with what you want to do and they help you figure out how to do it. It's not, you know, somebody isn't standing there saying, do this, do that. Anyway, I, um, at the time that summer before I went to, um, London, um, 
my father had died. And so I was writing a lot about my father and she went through the sketchbook and she said, okay, this, take this, make this into something. And so I started, so I took the, started with the text and um, started, my mother sent me images of my father, you know, old pictures and stuff. And I started making what essentially turned into a book, but it was print. So some of them opened like a folio and some of them were just a single sheet um, in all different media. And they had a text running through. And um, I spent two terms doing that. Wow. And at the end of the year, um, it was, I mean, it was a, you know, I look at it now and I go, oh, look how, how quaint. But I mean, it was a huge thing for me. It was this big step to, um, to having a work that was more coherent. And even though it was all different styles, every single one was different. Um, the, the text and the, the sort of storyline carried you through it. Um, at the end of the year, my mother got sick and we sort of had to leave early. So we finished in a rush and then went back to America. And, um, and I, I called this, the, the, the sort of working title was the daddy book. The actual title of the book was my father's signature, which I, I had. Um, and the daddy book carried me through a long period of time, just as like, this is what I want to do. I want to make books. I don't know what it means. But, you know, I, I, when I was growing up, I was very, I lived in books, you know, books were everything. Books were, you know, they took you away from the world. They created whole worlds. And I, and I made books. My first book I was in third grade. I wrote a little book of poetry with little illustrations and stuff. And, um, and so coming back, doing the daddy book, sort of, I said, yeah, this is what I want to do. I could not figure out how you made a living as a printmaker, which is why I thought I would go to graphic design, because I could see how you could make a living doing that. Um, and um, so I gradually um, worked my way towards being a designer in the real world and still sort of doing printmaking and stuff. Um, and uh, so- Did you incorporate your mom into the book? Um, Cause- No, she wasn't really, um, she wasn't really in the book. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I always thought I would do a book about my mother, but I never, um, I never did it. I mean, I never. Yeah, no, my, my mother doesn't. I mean, she, I, I think uh, she must appear as someone. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, they got married. It was in, in the sort of biography part of things, but um, she isn't a big figure there. It was more about how elusive my father was as you know, he was just a hard person to see. And I, and I, of all my siblings, I was probably one of the closest because I realized that he was, I realized when his father died that it was like, wait, people can go away and then you don't know them. And I'd ask him questions, but he was just a very, um, he was kind of hard to say, uh, not particularly self-aware and he didn't really care about it you know so he was sort of very interior so it's hard to see and that's it took me many years to see about the book but when I read it now I can see it's all about where are you where are you and 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 he's just you know you just keep looking and you never really quite get there I mean yeah. it's uh you know, I loved him very much, but he was, I, I mean, I can see, I can understand more of his, I don't know, psycho neurotic, whatever it is, because I've seen myself and my siblings and stuff, right. you know, but um, at the time I just, um, it was looking for him. And I guess when I thought about doing a book about my mother, it was a little different, but I never, I never got there. And, you know, it's, yeah. <laughs> It's way water way 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 under the bridge now yeah. who knows maybe i'll get there someday were either of them artistic um 
my my father was more um he was a um, a doer you know he a maker but um but a little funky mm -hmm. um i mean but he rebuilt our house and uh you know when he had to paint the house he painted it himself when he had to build a new retaining wall in the garage he went out and you know poured the forms and made it when he, when my mother really wanted a patio and back he built a patio you know he did all the, this kind of stuff yeah. and um so there was that do-it-yourselfness on his side. My mother was very creative. She, uh, I think she probably would have been an artist, but she got married and had seven children, which was really a time-consuming thing. <laughs> but she, she went through, she drew pastels when we were young, you know, portraits of some of us, not all of us. Um, she sewed, she sewed clothes for all of us, you know, the, the, at Easter and Christmas, maybe, well, I guess Easter was the big one where she would sew new dresses for us and- um, It was such a time. <laughs> what? It was such a time, you know? Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, she, was, she was very creative. She went through a period where she made mosaics on, you know, it was a big thing people did, you know, it's like little coffee tables, you know, you'd mosaic the top. She did um, that kind of stencil painting um, that's in uh, early American kind of furniture where you paint the furniture yes. black yes. and then yes. you use the stencils with these little metallic powders, you know, and um, yes. she did all kinds of crafty, um, and, and I think she had a lot of creative talent. Um, she was just, you know, she- In her, in her, in her plot box. Yeah, she was uh, in the wife and mother box. And, you know, after my father died, she had a, a year to sort of be by herself. Mm -hmm. And then she died. And she was, she sort of completely redid as much as she could the house, you know, and got a new car and da 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 da. She got rid of the old uh, heat that the, the, the oil heat that my father had insisted on and got new electric you know, but she didn't have very much time that was just hers. Yeah. And uh, I think that's uh, typical for some, some. Yeah. 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 I think, uh, I think it was. And I, and I think that actually that was a, a big influence in my life that um, I, when I grew up, I, it was just like, Oh, I, d I was very shy of getting involved with people because you wound up getting married and having babies and then you couldn't do anything. Right, right. And I was in my 30s before I entertained the idea of wanting to have a baby, you know, mm -hmm. biological clock and all that. But I think my mother's example really made me think th this is dangerous territory. You lose yourself. You can't do anything. Yeah. And, I, and I think that's sort of the way I saw it, that most people I knew, if they had babies, that that's what they did. Yeah. And it was hard to, to do anything else. Yeah. So I think of people like uh, uh, Alice Neal and, and, and wonder how, you know, she could be that prolific, but you give up a lot also with the kids lose out too, you know, in some ways. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you consider now your, well, well who, so, I guess I'll go to the question, how, oh, what, what do I want to ask? I, I, I had, um, I guess maybe I want to know what you, well, so you, I'm going to skip over the, 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 those questions. You went, you went through the, the graphic design and then you got to book art at Mills. Oh, and, yeah. and then, it makes sense to me listening to you talk about printmaking and wanting to be able to give and, and, and have multiples that, that sort of it's, I always think of it also as a, um, um, it's sort of a, uh, a, a more equal playing field. You know, it's not as precious in some ways though it is precious, but it's more egalitarian, I guess that, that it's more accessible to many people. There's not just one precious piece. Mm -hmm. And that I like, and I like like your father building and how people did their things, how they built their own and that hand and that materiality, which is what I liked about printmaking also, or like about it. So how would you consider your work in the book, 
bookmaking or book art as you got to it. Where do you see yourself in that, um, in that world and history and current book art world? Because my, to be, to be frank, I, I, I find you extremely modest for the um, books and things that you've made. Um, and so where do you see yourself in that? Or do you think about it? Or what do you think about the book art world and, and what it is um, now? Yeah, I, I don't think about it too much. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I sort of feel like um, when Mills came along, um, it was, you know, I got, I, 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 somebody told me that Mills had a program. Mm -hmm. And I sent away for the catalog. And when I got the catalog, I said, oh, this is everything I ever wanted to learn. I want to do this. And um, so I applied and I was accepted. And, and the state offered me a fellowship. And, uh, you know, I said, okay, this is one of those, you know, the, the universe opens a door and you go through it because how could you say no? And it was, it was the most intense two years, you know, of, of making and dealing with my, um, you know, demons like, oh no, what do I write about? What do I do? And that sort of thing. One of my one of my books, and I think in the first year was this book. Uh, it was called um, what was it called? Empty Pages. And it was uh, me and Mallarmé walking through the pages. Uh, it was uh, an accordion that opened up, and we're walking through the pages of this book. And he's focused on oh, but the empty page coming up and. And I'm worried about all these frozen chickens that starts out with all these frozen chickens. Um, That's awesome. It's just, but it's just this, that was, Mallarmé was always this image for me of, you know, the, the, the whiteness of the page being haunted by the emptiness and what do you have to say and that sort of thing. And, and that was, um, you know, what you have to confront in making something. Mm -hmm. But it's, um, but in terms of uh, the book arts world and where I see myself in it, I, um, I, I mostly don't think of myself. I mean, I, I get really excited when, you know, I'm in a show or something or I'm in, you know, um, uh, Alistair put me in his book and said something nice about my work. And it's like, oh, you know, it's like a little kid. Um, yeah, it's a big deal. So, so it's like... Um, there's, there's part of it that's, it, it is like being a little kid, you know, and you're, you're up there on the stage and you're doing a little ballerina routine and then you come off and it's like, oh, and then there's the rest of your life. And, you know, most of our lives is the rest of our life. Um, and there's a little bit of the ballerina and that's fun. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm, I mean, I've really enjoyed being able to keep doing book arts, you know, it's like, uh, I've, I've been mostly a graphic designer and when I retired, which is about 11 years ago, I guess, I think it was 2009 I retired. Then I taught book arts for a couple of years and, um, and I was able to do a lot more than I had mostly been able to before that because I would work on a book and make myself crazy, really exhaust myself. You know, I'd work all day, then I'd come home and I'd work six or seven hours and I'd get up the next morning and go to work. And, you know, you can only do that for so long. And you'd find, I'd finally finish the book or whatever it was for a show or something. And then I'd be exhausted and not do it for a long time. So when I retired, I was able to work much more on the books. And, um, and I've probably produced more books, you know, in the last 10 years than I had in the, you know, the decade or so before that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you, you know, I, I mean, I'm glad when people like my work, uh -huh. you know, like most people, <laughs> but I, I, I don't know where I fit in. You know, I leave that to other people to decide. Yeah. I just, you know. Well, the, the reason I ask, and it's, it's, it is because for me, the part of the, the book art program is realizing that there's there isn't like I was an art history major so with the book art there isn't a, a terminology that really fits it seems like sort of like the chickens on the page you know it's kind of trying to figure out where it belongs and where it's supposed to roost and so I don't really I, I, I keep in mind how the book art world shows up or is recognized not that any of that matters but that 
it's an interesting part of defining what it is. I don't know. It, it's, it's like having a, I don't know, but I, but I don't, I don't think there's a clear picture of where it fits in, in the art world or the book world or where it, I mean, where, it, where book arts does or where yes, my work does? Book arts. Book arts. Yeah. In general. I, think it, I mean, I think it's, um, it's, it's strange because when I was, younger and uh, and I really wanted to work in book publishing mm -hmm. when I was younger and I did for a couple of years I was a product I was an editorial assistant and then I was a production editor something like that and um and at the time to realize because to, to me books had always been everything and so it was like oh if you had a best-selling book that was like you you'd probably were the most you know, the richest and most important person in the world. It's like, no, you had a best-selling book, maybe. But, um, but it's like the, the percentage of people who read a lot, it's really, really tiny. The percentage of people who buy hardbound books, say, or even trade paperbacks, even smaller percentage. The percentage of people who go to book arts, even smaller, and yet the world is huge. I mean, the, the, the range of the kind of work people do and, you know, how people define what a book is or what book arts are, you know. I, I mean, I've seen people do video and it's book arts. I've seen people do sculpture and it's book arts. I've seen people do, you know, writing and it's book arts and it's all book arts. And it's a, it's a nice, flexible kind of category because it expands to hold just about anything you want it to. But it's hard because it's not it's not a it's not so much part of the industrial art complex, you know. It's like people don't make millions of dollars by publishing little books. Although I guess some fine artists make a lot of money doing book arts, but you know, it's just it's such a huge spectrum of what people do and you know. that sort of um fascinates me yeah that it's that yeah. it's so that it's so little but it's still so big well yeah and it also it it makes it it's one of the things i love about it too yeah um so um i guess <laughs> my other questions we have 15 minutes which is way over the time so thank you um i want to know in some ways how you would describe how you work or um i think the um the description of your first book and the chickens on the white page is is uh kind of illuminating <laughs> and, uh, um and then i want to know about what you like about your books and if you have plans or want to expand or if you had a dream of doing a book of some sort or going a direction what you would like to try you it seems I, I got I, the feeling that you set yourself a challenge or you see something and then you kind of go down that rabbit hole, but I don't know. Um, and I loved when Julie, I actually wrote it down when I looked up um, when you came to speak to our class and she said, our, co our cohort was kind of obsessive. And, <laughs> <laughs> and your books are just, they're, they're incredible. You know, all those like I, I look at him like Julie has the, the walnut one that she'll share in class and stuff. And just the work and the, 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 the work that goes into that and the persistence in it, not to mention the excellence art, all that is just amazing. So, um, so I guess, how do you work? That's what I would, and what do you like about your books the most and, and what would you like to expand or anything? Um, how I work is, um, yeah, I guess I get obsessed with something, you know, it's, uh, uh it, it, every book it's different. I mean, I, I think that the, the huge trajectory is you say you want to do something. There's a big period of like, ah, what am I going to do? How do I do it? This turmoil. There's like, I'm never going to be able to do anything again in my life. And then finally you say, okay, I'll start here and you do something and then you build on that and yeah you get obsessed you go down some rabbit hole and sometimes you spend years there i mean when I, the the science book i really i started it in the mid 90s somewhere and i finally published it in 
2012. So that's a long time. I mean, it's it, almost 20 years. And obviously I wasn't working on it the whole time. You know, I'd, I'd get it to, I, I'd get it to a, a model that would be in a show or something. And then it would, I would leave it for a few years and someone would ask me to put it in a show and I'd say, Oh, but if I'm going to put it in a show, then I have to make it good because I can look at it and see how bad it is. So then, you know, I went through that a few times and after I retired, that's, I decided, well, I'm going to do this now, I guess, especially after I taught a, a class in pop-ups at um, CCAC or CCA now. Um, and, and I thought, well, if I'm ever going to do this, this would be the time. Now I have, you know, spent a semester going through all these models and studying all these forms. And I sat down and, um, you know, redesigned all the pops and, and you know, um, finished it, although I'm still binding it. <laughs> I mean, I still have books to be bound. I can't say that I'm binding it right now. But yeah, so I, so I start somewhere either um, either there's some external force like, I mean, in science started because I was asked to do a book for this show mm. um, that Julie was also in. She did that um, Einstein book, I think. Mm. Um, and they asked me to do it. And my initial reaction was like, science, what am I gonna do about science? And then I thought about it and science was really important to me when I was young, science and math. So it became a sort of, everything becomes a very self-obsessive kind of what about my experience so it was all about my experience with science and uh and uh, uh so yeah but i mean you know uh, uh, books that i've done in the last you know the walnut book was because i agreed to do this this conference for the miniature book society and part of it was you were supposed to do a a, a you know get a some kind of special gift for the people who were coming and so you know this was just like too much it was like oh it was a souvenir it was you know and it was something that susan my twin sister and i could do together and um so we just i mean that whole conference was kind of like uh, an expanded version of what i do with the book only it was a conference so you know we actually made that book we did a book that um the uh that the uh, miniature book people published. So we just had to do the art and the design and stuff and somebody else letterpress printed it and it was bound and stuff. And, um, and we did programs that folded up into a little book thing. We did, uh, oh, I did, um, we did these bridges that were like the tip for the tables, you know, that had lights on them with um, the Transamerica tower at one end and the, the oh Tribune tower at the other end. and. I mean, it was just like a year of insane working on book artsy kind of things. And then, you know, organizing the conference itself, you know, getting the the programs, you know, so setting up a trip to the library special collection and the book club and going over there and going through all their miniature books and making a little book uh, as a bibliography of all their miniature books. I mean, just insane oh. obsessiveness. <laughs> but, you know, that was like a year and a half and, and that completely exhausted me. I mean, yeah. After that, I said, never again <laughs> do I do something like this. It was, it was, it was, I mean, it was quite a feeling of doing all this stuff, but then just tremendous exhaustion afterwards. Yeah. 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 But the books are kind of like that, you know, it's like, and you get to a certain point. I, I've always said when I was young and very obsessed about the empty page and was like, oh, how do you do this big stuff? And it's like, you take one step and then you take another and the work tells you where to go. So, you know, you write and you read it and you go, oh God, that's awful. And then you write <laughs> it again and you read it and, you know, you, you lay out a page and you go, ah, oh, I don't think so. And then you lay it out again. I mean, it's just, it builds on itself. And once you have a certain critical mass, you can't really stop, you know, it's like, yeah. then, then you, then you're just trying to solve all the problems you create for yourself, you know, whether they're technical <laughs> problems of paper or ink or how do you print it and how do you bind it and stuff, or whether they're, you know, more intellectual problems or spiritual problems or artistic problems or whatever. 
but it's all, you know, you set this thing in motion and then it's figuring it out and finishing it. And, you know, I have trouble finishing. <laughs> Julie will tell you, I still have books from graduate school that I haven't found. Well, I did write down from that day that you had taken, um, that you said it was 20 years for the memory of science book. Yeah. Which, which is brilliant. And, and you, it, you know, you got awards for it and you got, you, it was highly honored. And, and so it's, it's kind of, um, but it's like, I know I'll never, I, I know it's really unlikely I'll do a book like that again, because I don't have 20 more years to spend, you know, it's just yeah. like, it's it that I, and I really, I love that book, you know, yes. and I put a lot into it, but I, I just don't know that I have that much time left in my life to do a book that yeah. big, you know? So now it's more, I, I, I like exploring different kinds of structures and stuff. And, um, you know, you get a, yeah. <laughs> well, I think something that stands out to me, you said, you said you like the printmaking because you could give, you like to give the things away. Yeah. And um, when I was looking at your work again, um, the other day, I was thinking, it, there's something there's a joy in them and they're very personal um mm -hmm. in a in a in a gift kind of way you know it and i don't mean that they're gifts the but that yeah. there's that they, they 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 there's so much an offering you know to like they're just that somebody cares that much to to make a book and they're they're personal so that with the personal is um yeah it, it makes sense that um the memory of science book is like that and yeah, yeah. you know you're you, that that you're the um what was it 75 um oh, 75, 75 pictures 75 words yeah i mean they're give all give that man a cigar yeah they, they, they link to your life and yet they don't they, they go much further than that and that's that's pretty cool um so I guess, um, see, I don't know what happens when the time runs out. So <laughs> seven minutes. <laughs> um, yes, it what, what, what else do I want to ask? I want to ask, um, I, I, I want to ask what you're reading, but I'll wait for that um, if we have time. Um, what do you see? Um, we, no, I know what I'll do. You, since I said the 75, you said you're working now to help your husband with his book. Is that design and your graphic design or is there something that you- Yeah, want? yeah, I, I'm do, I was doing the book design. Um, so he did this book about um, his work and his life. He's a, um, uh, a font designer and he also does paintings uh, with a lot of, um, they're mostly, um, like old neon signs and stuff that he's photographed over the years and a sort of photorealistic style. Um, so he's written this book uh, about his life and his work. And um, yeah, I've spent most of the last, I don't know, year and a half working on it, doing the page layout and design and um, trying to get all the art together and, you know, uh, you know, keyed to the, the book, you know, and, and figure out what we still need to shoot and find and stuff. And if you get through that, what, what do you have any ideas of what you want to do next? Julie said that, you, that she's, I remember asking her something. She said, well, I don't talk about what I'm going to do. So just generally, I don't want to be rude or. <laughs> no, um, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, right now, everything is so strange. Um, it is so strange. It's, it's, it's just the strangest time in the world and um and yeah, it's yeah it's um it's like you know m my work is very personal it, it tends also to be kind of light I, I i i mean i don't know i i think a lot about things but i tend to stay on this surface you know um i write in rhyme i you know everything's all pretty everything's all uh, you know, my design isn't radical or anything. It's pretty conservative. Um, it's like, it doesn't seem at all suited to this time. You need something that's really, really crazy or really, really dark or really, really, um, I don't know. Um, I, I think about writing a lot, but I haven't been able to do any writing. Um, so I, I don't know. It's just, we're in a strange time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And it's, it's, it's definitely to be taken seriously. 
Um, I would say that perhaps um, I would, I can't remember the word you used, um, if you said light or something, but I would never use that word with, with what I see in your work. And, and I think that the fact of having to open up and having to participate is not a light thing. Um, and I'm not trying to- No, oh, no, no, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and that maybe that's exactly what we need, some of us right now, you know? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> just let me crawl in that little uh, flower. <laughs> Or that cake. Um, <laughs> so we are at the end. Um, yeah. yeah. I just I can't thank you enough. I I uh, even in all these times, yeah, I do enjoy looking at your work and um, and it's the personal. I think it's because it has such integrity as being personal. You know, there's a difference between personal and light, and there's a difference between you know being being f fully showing up for that. Um, what are you reading right now? <laughs> Actually, I'm, I I in. I'm, I've been reading um, sort of dark books. I mean, I've been reading about uh, the political, um, the political uh, quandary we find ourselves in. I was reading Anne Applebaum's The Twilight of Democracy, and now I'm reading Evil Geniuses. It's, you know, it's all about uh, America and how we got to this place. And um, it, it's kind of you know, it's a, it's just a deeper way of doom scrolling, you know, going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's kind of like, I, I can't stop myself. It's like, you know, you want to yeah, somehow, to you yeah. want to somehow figure it out or be able to m make it make sense in your brain. You know, I just, I don't understand how we've become so unkind as, as, as people, you know, to each other. It's, it's just really mind boggling, you yeah, know. Yeah. We don't see each other, you know. Yeah, people, that's the people problem. Don't, people don't see the different communities. People don't, everybody's yeah. in a silo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's it's just gotten really insane. <laughs> well, thank you. And um, thanks for all your work. And uh, I really appreciate you saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. I, I, I'm very touched by your appreciation. It means yeah. a lot to me. Yeah. You take care. Stay okay, safe. Okay. You too. Okay. Yep. Bye. Bye-bye.